Okay, today we're going to take a look at snail sort. Now, snail sort is not necessarily a method that will sort an array in numerical order um, or in decreasing or increasing order. Um, what snail sort does is it takes a matrix of numbers and it will sort them in a spiral sort of pattern, so in the same shape as a snail. Um, so when it returns the sorted matrix, um, it will return it in a way that follows this pattern. So our returned array, when we are done, um, will look something like this. So as you can see, the array that's being returned here isn't a, an array that's been sorted in ascending or descending order. Um, it's sorted by the manner in which it um, is included in the matrix. So um, what we have to do here is we have to find some method to create this spiral type pattern uh, to sort this array. Now, if we take a look at this first uh, bit, one, two, three, we can see that if we take that, uh, that array out of the matrix, um, that's the beginning of our array. Now, uh, Ruby has a method that does this, and this method is called dot shift. Now, shift will, of course, take the first item out of an array and move it um, to a temporary variable if that's what we're using it as, or it will return that shifted part of that matrix. So if I have an array such as one, two, three, when I shift the array, uh, it will return a uh, one value for that shift, and then the array will be left with two and three. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this shift method um, that's built into our arrays object, and I'm going to take this first array off of the matrix. So again, if my matrix is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. When I shift this, uh, this array, so I will call dot shift, um, what's going to happen is it will pull off this one, two, three array, because that's the first element in that matrix array. Um, and so that is going to actually be returned as one, two, three. And what we'll be left with then is four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now, uh, we have the first part of our intended uh, sort. It's already built in here. So what we need to do then is add the other parts of the array, so the other elements of the array, into this um, shifted array. And it has to be in the order that we want with this rotational sort of pattern here, all right? So one way to do this is to use another built-in uh, method for the arrays object, and this method is called transpose. Now, what transpose does is it takes a matrix, such as uh, A, B, and C, and D, E, and F, 
And this is a two by three matrix. And it transposes it to be a three by two matrix um, that looks like A, D, B, E, and C, F. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that same sort of transposition um, because what we want is we want the next couple of digits um, to be uh, 6 and 9. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm building a recursive method that will continue to shift and transpose and shift and transpose um, to make its way all the way through the matrix. Um, however, we run into a problem. Uh, when I transpose this array, um, I get uh, 4, 7, 5, 8, and 6, 9. Um, but uh, if I shift 4, 7 off of this array, uh, and it adds to 1, 2, 3, uh, it won't match what I need to happen here. So this array needs to be, or the, the method, or the array that needs to be added to the shifted array is 6, 9. Now if we take a look right here, we can see that 6, 9 is our last array in the transposed um, matrix. Um, so if I want to get that last array to be first, I then use another built-in method for arrays called reverse. Now reverse will just basically reverse the array. So if I have an array that needs to be reversed, such as one, two, three, and I call reverse on it, it's going to return three, two, one. And that's pretty much what I need to happen with this array here. So if I call reverse on this um, matrix, it should return 6, 9, 5, 8, and 4, 7. Now this has exactly what I need because I need the 6, 9 to go into this next location. Um, so if I then shift 6, 9, um, and I'm adding it to this 1, 2, 3, um, then I will get 1, 2, 3, 6, 9. Okay, and that's what I need to start off my array. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to recurse all four of these steps, or all of these steps, um, to basically continue shifting, transposing, and reversing um, the matrix until my matrix is empty. So if I were to keep doing that, um, let's just see what happens here. So what I'm left with after the shift is 5, 8, and 4, 7. Okay, now the next numbers that I need are 8 and 7. So that was the shift. So now I have to transpose. And that will get me um, 5, 4, and 8, 7. Okay, remember my next step then is reverse. So then I get 8, 7, and 5, 4. And then I shift, which will then, if I'm adding it to the array that I already have, um, remember we're recursing here, so um, it will be adding when we go through the recursion method. Um, so then I shift and I get one, two, three, six, nine, and then eight, seven. Okay, and then that leaves me 
with 5 and 4. Okay, so again, I transpose, and that will give me five and four. So notice my two by one array became a one by two uh, matrix. Um, so then I have to uh, reverse after the transpose. So that will net me four and five. Okay, and then I shift the four, which will bring my new array to one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, and four. And then what's left in my array is simply five. So again, I go to transpose. And of course, when I transpose this matrix, it will simply return that same matrix. And the reason I'm doing this, again, is because we have to remember that this is recursive. Um, and then I reverse this. And of course, the reverse of this matrix then is simply the same thing. And then I shift. which will add again to my final matrix, one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, and four, oh, and five. Okay, so now if I test this matrix against my matrix at the top, one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, four, five, we notice that we now have our snail sorted um, matrix. Okay, so from here, we need to go to the actual code. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the snail sort code that I've uh, sorted out here. Um, so let's take a look at the spec first, since we had to build out the R spec. Now, this R spec is just a basic, very, very simple R spec, and it's making, or it's doing the tests that were asked for in the challenge itself. Um, now the first test that was, I was asked to complete uh, or to test against was what happens when snail sort is a, uh, or an empty matrix is passed into snail sort. Um, now the challenge said that it should return um, a statement that says check uh, for values are there are no digits in the input arrays. Um, so that is what should be returned if there are no values in the matrix. Then um, the next test was to test whether or not, or what would happen if the input matrix was or had elements in it that were different sizes. Now, what's going to happen when you input a matrix with a values of different sizes is that as we do the transposition, like we showed in the uh, whiteboard, um, we're going to get nil values on the various array in, in the various arrays in the transposition. Um, and if that happens, um, we can't do anything with those no values because the methods that we need to use um, cannot be used on no values. So we're going to get a nil value error, um, and that's not going to help us out in any way. Then, um, and what we should happen after that is we will return the statement, the number of inputs in each input array must be the same. Then we actually do the tests on the correct matrices. Um, the first, the 3x3 three three matrix. Uh, so just like we saw on the whiteboard, I pass in uh, the array 1, 2, 3, the array 4, 5, 6, and finally the array 7, 8, 9. Um, and it should return the uh, a single array in the sorted order that we showed in the whiteboard. And then finally, we do the same thing with the 4x4 four four matrix. Um, again, running the snail sort on the 4x4 four four matrix should return an array in snail sorted order. Okay, so uh, before we do anything else, uh, let's go ahead and run the R spec. So bundle exec R spec. Um, and we, 
I must be in the wrong file. Uh, C. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, so let me clear the screen. There we go. Okay, so uh, as we can see, uh, snail sort checks our values uh, in all the input arrays. If it doesn't, uh, it passes the correct output, checks for all input arrays of the same size, uh, sorts the 3x3, three three and sorts the 4x4. Four four. Um, we have four examples and zero failures. So it definitely passes the R spec. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code itself. All right, now when I built the snail sort, um, remember we had to have those validation checks for the array uh, that was passed in. Um, so the first was to check whether or not that array was or contained any um, elements that were empty. Now, if there are any elements that are empty in the array, then we have to return there are no digits in the inputs array. Um, so I uh, built the guard statement. Um, if any of the elements are empty, return that statement. And then we also check to make sure that um, all the elements are the same size. Now, I did this um, by just saying, hey, look, I'm going to take a look at that array, uh, that first element in the array at array zero, and then I'm going to test that all of the other uh, ar elements in the matrix are the same size as that array. If they're not, then we have inputs of different sizes, and we'll use a return statement. The number of inputs in each input array must be the same. Okay, once it passes the validation check, so no returns happen, then we actually go into our sorting method. Um, so I built a separate sorting method because I did build it as a recursive method, and just like I did in the whiteboard, um, well, there was one, one variation. I don't like mutating arrays um, that I don't have to. So what I've done is, when the array is passed in, I create a duplicate of the array. That's what I'm going to do everything to. So all of the, the methods that we're going to be using are going to be done to that, um, that duplicate array. In this um, method, it's called temp. Um, so everything that we're doing, all the transposing, reversing, and shifting, we're doing to the temp array. Um, again, because I don't like mutating arrays if I don't have to. Um, so we duplicate the array, and we call it temp. And then we create our break statement for our recursion. So if the array, um, or if the temporary array is empty, then we're going to return our, that empty um, array. Um, and that return statement just adds that empty array to the end of our recursion. Um, so for each recursion, if the array is not empty, then I'm going to shift the first element off of the matrix um, and add to it that sort again. Now notice um, when I add to it, I'm transposing, I'm sorting the transposed and reversed matrix. Um, so again, we see that transposition just like we saw on the whiteboard, and the reversal just like we saw on the whiteboard, and then we start the sort over again. And that will shift, transpose, reverse, shift, transpose, reverse, etc., etc., until we get to the, um, the empty array or the empty temp. And when that happens, then it all comes together and um, we are returned that, la that sorted um, array. Um, so I've built a couple of tests and these are basically just the tests that we've built in before. Um, slight variation on the um, un unequal elements, but this just shows you that those, that those work. Uh, and then Finally, uh, we, we can just see that in action. So I'm going to inspect uh, first mat1 array and then snail sort it. Then I'm going to inspect mat2 array, snail sort it, mat3 array, etc., and 4 array finally. So let's go ahead and do that. So Ruby, um, and I need to be in the library, um, and then it's snail sort. Okay, so as we can see, all the matrices are passed in. Um, and then if it doesn't contain any digits in the inputs array, it returns the statement that we need. Uh, if it uh, is, uh, passes all the array values, um, it sorts the three by three, passes all the array values, sorts the four by four. And then if we have unequal inputs, it gets the return statement for unequal inputs. Again, if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to 
post them in the forum and I will answer them as soon as possible. And that'll be all. Thank you guys.